Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Primrez Zajbima. I post content about academics, career, and adulting. And in today's episode, I'm going to be speaking about a topic that is of course cross-cutting because if you're going to be thinking about university education, career ideas, and growing up, that is of course all about academics, career, and adulting. Thank you so much everyone who subscribed. If you've not done so, please do so. And also feel free to like, comment, as well as share my content. All right, so let's get into the topic of the day. I personally, you know, speak from experience for the most part because I first came to South Africa as an undergraduate student in the year 2012, progressed to do my honors in 2015, did my master's in 2016, came back for PhD in 2018, and commenced a postdoctoral career in 2021. I don't know everything, of course. So if you've got more to say, please feel free to use the comment section. If you have questions, please feel free to ask those because I might leave something out. All right. So the first one is a career-related note. Number one, you should know that coming to study in South Africa does not guarantee that you will automatically be able to enter the South African labor market. So what do I mean by this? I think one of the most obvious ones is the reality that as of 2 February 2022, a lot of immigration related regulations changed. And one of them, which was very critical and in line with some of my interests, was the critical skills visa. So prior to the 2nd of February 2022, you could get a critical skills visa after completing a degree or after completing your PhD qualification. And it gave you, you know, permission to actually stay in South Africa without a job, look for a job, get a job, secure a job, start working, and then be on the path to getting permanent residence status. However, that is no longer possible. So nowadays, if you want a critical skills visa, you should actually have a job offer in hand. And we know that for most people, if you are studying, you're actually not going to be able to gather for most the work experience that is required by most employers, for you to be able to gain accreditation by particular boards and be able to actually start on this job, you know. So most people actually don't have job offers when they finish their degrees. Most people don't now have this one year leeway to gain some form of experience that can lead you to getting employed after that one year. And also finishing a PhD in South Africa really no longer means that you can gain critical skills visas or gain access to permanent residency with ease. So a point of caution. Now, the same thing with immigration laws, right? Ministers change their minds or we can have new people moving into the home affairs portfolio. So this is not something that is there to say. There was a previous home affairs minister who decided that, you know, we need to give critical skills visas to people that are seeking opportunities that have South African qualifications. And now we've got a new directive which says you actually need a job offer to actually gain this critical skills visa. So the privileges obviously went down. However, I would like to tell anyone that is in tech or people studying towards some engineering qualifications that I have noted that some people actually get companies, organizations, and institutions that are willing to take them in as employees, that are also willing to sponsor these people's critical skills visa application processes, whether financially, whether legally, and also by waiting for them as they wait for their visas. So I am not saying that if you study at a South African university and you're not from South Africa, your chances of getting into the South African labor market are zero. I am not saying that. Also, you might be coming to South Africa to study towards a postgraduate qualification or to undertake a postdoctoral fellowship, which means you already have certain skills and some years of experience. It may be easy for you to actually take the time while you're doing your postgraduate or postdoc to apply for jobs in South Africa, get them and get the future employer to endorse your application for employment. So all hope is not lost in that regard. All right. Number two, I want to give you a note that coming to study in South Africa is actually a very good decision, particularly if you're from the African continent, because South Africa is home to some of the best universities on the continent, as well as, of course, some of the top universities globally. So obviously, this depends on your choices. This also depends on where you get accepted. 
it's also the best place to study if you're coming from an African country where there's very few resources. For example, if you're doing medicine, you're doing sciences that require experiments, you're doing tech that requires a lot of advanced technology, or maybe you're doing engineering courses that requires modern equipment and modern knowledge. You are in a good place if you are at a South African university that has these facilities. Furthermore, a lot of South African based Professors, you know, are highly ranked, so you will be in good hands in terms of the people you're going to be working with, as well as in terms of the people that are going to be teaching you. And then South Africa is also home to relatively diverse university populations. This, of course, depends on where a university is located, but I think for the most part, you will be able to engage with people on a multicultural level, as well as on an international level. All right, so... Still speaking about South African university spaces, I think a word of caution to people wanting to pursue undergraduate qualifications. You should double check with different faculties about their requirements. So for example, I know that if you come from a Southern African country that has a medical school, you usually cannot gain entry into South African universities to undertake undergraduate studies in medicine. Usually students that have this privilege already probably have permanent residency because their parents were here, then they gain permanent residency with their parents, so they can gain access to some extent, I think, into medical school. So if you want to study medicine undergraduate level, you may have to resort to studying medicine in your home country. But if you're interested maybe in coming to South Africa for a master of public health or a master's in economics that is linked to the health sector, then you may be able to do that. And then a second one is law. You may be admitted into a law faculty within the South African context, but you will not be able to practice as a legal practitioner within the Republic. This, of course, also is subject to regulations changing from time to time, but don't have high hopes if you want to be a lawyer that if you study law in South Africa, you'll be able to be a lawyer in South Africa. You may use it, though, as a basis for you to go back home and gain legal training in your particular home country. Humanities. I honestly don't think that there's a need to study a humanities undergraduate degree uh, in South Africa because, I mean, I did it. I think that the main advantage is, of course, exposure to highly ranked professors to a large extent and also exposure to people that publish a lot. But to a large extent, really, there is like no major disadvantage. You can study a humanities course back in your home country, then save up towards doing a postgraduate qualification in South Africa because, of course, the level of supervision here is much better in terms of the quality. Degrees are usually finished in reasonably shorter time frames. For example, I know that in some African countries, people spend five to ten years doing a PhD. But within the South African context, I've seen people doing it within one to three, four years, five years, you know. They also do it after 10 years. It just depends on supervision, the way you work and things that happen during the journey. But I think that if you want to do a strong master's or PhD qualification, definitely choose South Africa, especially if you are in the humanities. And then when it comes to, I think, thinking about university ratings, it is important depending on where you want to go in life because the reality is that there are places where they will look at university rankings. However, you need to bear in mind that not everyone puts these universities on a pedestal. So for example, I did my honors and my undergraduate as well as my master's at the University of Cape Town, which has been the best university in Africa on most rankings for like the longest time before I came to UCT and even now. But when I went to work in the government of Zimbabwe, I was with graduates from different local universities and elsewhere. And where you had studied didn't really matter. Everything you had to learn on the job. And for the most part, people that actually had local knowledge from studying at local universities were probably better off than me in some ways. But no one was better than the other. So just to let you know that just because it's highly ranked doesn't necessarily mean to a large extent you are better than most people. I do acknowledge, however, that the academic rigor that UCT puts you through prepares you to be a much stronger person in more ways than it does. It happens with like people coming from different colleges, you know. Um, but you know what? There's really no sure sign. I'm pretty sure, for example, with people that have studied law, 
people that study law in Zimbabwe, while you're studying law at UCT, might actually be better off than you because you're going to have to learn a lot about the local when you go back home. But then remember that you also have the strengths of having South African exposure. So everything that you learn doesn't go to waste. All right. So I think that the third one is for PhD and postdoc levels. South Africa is a good place to go to. But because I've already mentioned that the route to critical skills or permanent residency is now very narrow, I would highly encourage anyone to do a PhD or a postdoc overseas or abroad. I think there's even more opportunities there to progress from being a PhD to postdoc to getting permanent residency or PhD postdoc to getting full tenure track positions. I do stand to be corrected, but I've just noted that Instead of what I've done, for example, staying 10 plus years in South Africa, I could have done better maybe if I had done one of my postgraduate qualifications abroad for international experience, of course. However, I do think that if you do a PhD uh, or postdoc within the South African context, it's still not a train smash, if, especially if you want to be close to home, that is close to your African country. And also if you just want to be in a... Of South African University then go for it you know and then there is really no guarantee for progression from PhD postdoc to a full tenure track lecturing position I think that's the truth globally so I don't think you should spend too much time trying to do your PhD or postdoc here with the hope of getting a job here because you'd rather do that abroad or elsewhere because the chances are more or less the same um, and then I think that also you should note that cost of living in South Africa is relatively low compared to moving abroad. And although it may be higher than some African contexts, you will realize that being in South Africa exposes you to a lot in terms of people in your sector or your industry, in terms of academics, in your discipline, as well as maybe your exposure to being able to teach or conduct research in top rated universities. So South African universities remain the best go-to spaces, even for PhD and postdoc, compared to most African universities. And then I think that cost of living disparities are something you need to note. Coming to South Africa doesn't mean that you have the same experience. Someone in Gauteng, someone in Lipopo, someone in um, KwaZulu-Natal, someone in the Western Cape, their re realities are different, right? So I'm talking about realities in terms of cost of living. So for example, I've realized that for the amount of rent that I pay, let's say I'm paying 7,000 rands for a bachelor space in Cape Town, someone can actually rent out a three bedroom space somewhere, let's say in Pretoria for the same amount. Someone can actually have a decent apartment for less than that amount with a two bedroom space in Gauteng and, and so much more. So try and do your research around what comes with actually moving to Stellenbosch? What comes with moving to Johannesburg? You know, what are my options? And also usually if a space already has high rental rates, ha, I can tell you, even the cost of living in that city is also high. I'm saying this, I've been living in Cape Town for the longest time. So I know the disparities between Cape Town, Durban, Johannesburg and whatnot. And people that are outside Cape Town actually have lower cost of living. All right, but also knowledge about what comes with the space. People that go to small towns, for example, uh, Rose Universities in Grahamstown, often complain that they are in very contained small towns, right? But if you are at a university in Johannesburg, you're in this vast metropolitan space. If you're in Cape Town, it's quite urban, but it's a bit different, for example, from the vibe that you'd get, for example, from the Gauteng province. So also what comes with that kind of lifestyle? In terms of exposure, right? How many companies or organizations can you reach out to for vacation work? Do you need to actually move to another province during certain times? Should you be considering moving to another province for your next degree or for your job prospects and stuff like that? You should try and do your research around it because I think this is something that a lot of people do not speak about. And it's something that a lot of people don't actually think about when they are applying to university. So I hope that I'll be able to create more content of this of course, informed by people that have actually studied in different contexts within South Africa. Also, different South African universities come with different fee schedules. People probably do their research on this because usually the higher rent a university is, usually the more expensive it is. So you'll see that, for example, University of Pretoria, Stellenbosch University, University of Cape Town, 
probably charge more fees compared, for example, to let's say the University of KwaZulu Natal or the University of Mpumalanga, just to name a few. Also, be aware of the type of cuisine you're able to find in spaces. I think because South Africa is quite diverse in terms of both local and international populations, you may be able to find your favorite stuff within any South African province. I think if you come from Zimbabwe, for example, it won't be very difficult to find food that resonates with your palate. But of course, most of it is made in South Africa, grown in South Africa, so it might actually just taste different. And also the processing methods are also very different. But we do have some shops that stock stuff that is directly imported from different African countries. And you can still enjoy, for example, your Ghanaian or Nigerian cuisine. But that, of course, I think depends on where you are going to be located within the South African context. You know what? I always go for acclimatizing. Just get used to South African yogurt, get used to South African cereal, get used to South African maize meal, and then your life is easier. But then that's just me. All right. And also in terms of coming to South Africa, you may be aware of disparities, but you will only gain the lived experience of being in a diverse space once you're there. South Africa includes a lot of diversity, particularly across racial lines, across ethnic groups, across language groups as well. But for the most part, you should be able to go around if you have knowledge of English. Sometimes if you're a black African like myself, people may just mistake you for someone who speaks their own language. And it's really embarrassing when you're like, I'm so sorry, I don't speak this or I can't understand or I only speak English, but it happens. And then... We should also be aware that because South Africa, particularly according to its constitution, includes recognition of people that do not necessarily live according to heterosexual norms, right? Here I'm speaking about queer inclusivity. So in South Africa, there is more public freedom, right? I guess perceived. For people that are lesbian, people that are gay, usually those are the ones that are most visible, to exist and express themselves as the way they are. So you need to unlearn homophobia, you need to unlearn transphobia, and you also need to familiarize yourself with what it means to live in a diverse context and also what it means for you in terms of confronting your own fears. You might be fearful, you know, confronting what you don't understand because you might not understand. And if you've got hatred, also just needing to get rid of that because we don't operate a world based on hate. All right. So just to wrap up, I mentioned that number one, there's no direct link to getting a critical skills visa or a job. Number two, South Africa is definitely the best place to be in terms of most of its universities, their facilities, the academics who teach there, as well as the research experts who are based at those universities. And then the third one is that for PhD or postdoc, I think that really I, there's no major difference with going elsewhere. I think that if funds permit and if you've got a zeal to leave the continent, you're better off going elsewhere. Um, and then the last one was on living disparities. This ranges from cost of living, diversity in terms of language, race, ethnic groups, in terms of your sexual orientation and gender identity. So that's it in a nutshell. All I had to say for today, if I left something out, if you've got something to add on, if you've got questions, like I said earlier, feel free to make use of the comment section. I'm done for today. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get a notification when I post my next video. I'm so glad you watched this one until the very end. Bye.